Welcome back to King of the Mountain Season 4. This is round one of tournament number two. It's good to be back here in Race City for some racing. The fans are out in full force tonight. They are ready to see some modified die cast racing action. All I gotta say is bring it on. Our first driver tonight is Flip driving for Flips Racing in the Chevy Camaro. Flip may not be the best name for a driver. Next up, we have Will Speed for Tribute Racing, driving in the sparkling blue Audi Sport Quattro. Then we have Mayfield 41 of the Mayfield 41 Racing Team in the Chevy Monte Carlo SS. And last up is Brie O'Hazard for Team Toxic in the Chevy Camaro. I'm really hoping that car is not radioactive. Our current waivers don't cover radioactive exposure, do they? Oh, they do. Wow, really? Susan really thought of everything on those waivers. She is the best. Here we go, race one of four. The top driver in points will advance on to round two. Let's go racing. 64 new cars entering this tournament. 48 of them will be eliminated in round one. There's going to be a whole lot of losers. Flip currently has a lead. Mayfield 41 in second place in that orange Monte Carlo. Flip approaching the parking garage. Whoa! Oh boy. Wow, right off the bat. Flip slams into the parking meter. Then Mayfield 41 and Will Speed just plowed into him. Mayfield 41 is upside down. And there goes Brie O'Hazard, keeping a safe distance from the crowd, and we appreciate it. Let's try to see what happened here to Flip. Did that parking meter hit Pearl White? I'm really hoping she moved out of the way in time. I hope so. She's the king of the mountain. Let's see it again from the garage cam. I think it just missed her. I think she just fell back dodging it. Can we get someone out there to check on her? It turns out our previous track crew kind of quit. What? Something about unsafe working conditions, yada yada. I don't know. We're going to need somebody out there. We're working on it, but tonight we're just kind of freestyling it. And what is freestyling it when it comes to a track safety? We asked all the drivers to drive as safe as possible. And that's it? Like I said, we're working on it. Here we go with the restart of race one. Flip back out in the lead. Some paint swapping between Will Speed and Mayfield 41. Flip is like a mile ahead of everyone else. Hopefully this time he makes it through the parking garage, and he does. Way to go, Flip. And Flip will be the first one to pass the finish line. And there Ooh. we go. Ouch, it's like a demolition derby down here. Wow, I'm surprised they're not driving more safely since you asked them to drive safely. Quite frankly, I'm surprised as well. We had a gentleman's agreement. Which appears to be worthless. Well, look at Brio Hazard. They're keeping a nice safe distance from everyone down at the finish line. Once again, Brie, we do appreciate that. Here's the replay. You can see Mayfield 41 slams hard into the curb. I think he hit a spectator as well. Uh, I think that guy just wants a little attention. We've all seen the social media posts of people claiming they got hit at the race. Hashtag, I got hit at KOTM. But attending a King of the Mountain race is completely safe. Race, race is fun. Okay, the second time was a charm. We got one race down. Here we go with race two. Flip is currently in the lead with five points. In the front row, we have Will Speed in the blue Audi and Brio Hazard in the green Camaro. And they're off. Will Speed currently in the lead, followed by Flip. Brio Hazard in third, Mayfield 41 back and forth. Some aggressive driving by Flip, putting the pressure on Will Speed. Oh, and oh, Flip flips. If you're playing King of the Mountain Bingo at home, you can check car flipping over off your board. Oh my goodness, Ooh. we just lost, wait. He's still going. Will Speed recovers and wins the race going in reverse. You can check car finishing backwards off your bingo card as well. One more spectator hit in the crash, and I'm going to have bingo. That's going to be another DNF for Brio Hazard. Mayfield comes to a stop right next to him, and there goes Flip's flipped over car. Wait a minute. What's going on over here? Flip flipped his car over. Not that. What's going on with Mickey D's? Oh, didn't you hear it on the news? No. They said the restaurant was in violation of a zoning law, something about spectator view obstruction, something like that. Wow, that's shocking news to me. Um, I guess, race in peace, Mickey D's. You know, the ice cream machine was always broken, so oh, I could care less. Always broken. Like every single time. Is the machine that complicated? It can't be, right? I just want a vanilla cone. Is that too much to ask? Apparently it is. Ridiculous. With all this talk about ice cream, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Here we go. Will Speed on top of the scoreboard with seven points in the blue Audi. Starting in the pole position, we have Brio Hazard in the green Camaro and Mayfield 41 in the orange Monte Carlo. Uh, 3D, you got a little ice cream on your face oh, right there. Right here? Just a, a little bit more right Did there. Did I get it? Yeah, that's good. Oh, oh my goodness! And that's bingo, baby! What just happened? We got a man down and a car over. 
That's bingo on my card. Brio Hazard in the lead. They get sideways. There's a hit. And everyone comes to a stop, which means we're going to have to restart yet another race. Two in one night. Wow. A rough start so far for tournament number two. Wow, they ripped the awning right off Augie's coffee house. Ooh, you, you think that awning was a soft awning or a hard awning? A hard awning. Okay, I should have said that differently. But for the sake of that guy right there, I hope it was made of soft materials. Either way, it's bingo for me. How you doing, Steve? One more square. Are you guys seriously playing King of the Mountain bingo while you're supposed to be working? We're keeping track of what's going on in the race. That's literally my job. You've got a good point there. Here we go with the restart of race three. Hopefully they can avoid destroying any more private property. Like that hard awning? 2D. You said it first. It's a close to the cars. Wait a minute. Uh, I'm confused. I thought this was a four car race. Where did Mayfield 41 go? He entered that turn, but he did not exit. Maybe our monitor has a glitch or something. Oh boy, watch out. Here comes Brio Hazard. Brio Hazard makes it down to the finish line for the first time tonight. Step back, everyone. That car is toxic. And that right there will put some points on the board for Brie. I'd say it's too little too late, but Brie could technically tie Will Speed. Yeah, but where did Mayfield 41 go? We're not really sure right now. We have someone looking for the car. This is wild. Here's the replay. He's right there, and then wow. he's gone. He went over the turn. It appears that way, but we are still not sure the location of his car. Did they look behind the turn? Well, if you remember, we don't have a track and safety crew at the moment, so we just got like a camera guy out there looking for him, but I'm sure he'll turn up someday. We should probably change that DNF to an MIA for Mayfield 41. Well, look at that. He's back. What? And just in time to start in the pole position for the final race. Will Speed in the blue Audi, your current leader with 10 points. Flip and Bree have five. If Will Speed gets a DNF and Flip or Bree wins, we will have a tie on our hands here. A DNF is a definite possibility here tonight. Mayfield 41 with a big lead here so far. Will Speed and Brio Hazard side by side. Flip trying to catch up to Mayfield. He's got two wheels on the curb, gets it back down on the track. Mayfield 41 with a nice gap, taps the side wall, and this last race will go to Mayfield 41. But our winner advancing oh, on to round watch two. Out. I really hope those toxic signs on the car were for show. Relax, Tootie, lighten up. Our winner of the night with 12 points is Will Speed, who will be advancing on to round two. I already see two people passed out down there. I'm worried, 3D. They probably just had a little too much to drink. I don't know. I think the drivers also may have had a little too much to drink as well. That's probably accurate. Here's the replay. Brio Hazard making it to the finish line for the second time tonight. Unfortunately, it ends with a crash, but not too bad. And there you have it. Will Speed from Champaign, Illinois. Fancy. Driving for Tribute Racing will be advancing on to round two of King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 2. Welcome back to King of the Mountain. It's time for Group 2 of Round 1 of King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament Number 2. What's going on down there? Uh, apparently there was a biohazard incident, but rest assured, everything in Race City is A-OK. -okay. Wow. Sign those waivers, people. I'm going to fill out two of them. Let's see who's racing. First up, it's Nakasuka Wasabi for RV Autosports in the Mustang SVO. What's up, Danger? Up next is Cyrano Buckminster of Spaz and Spurious Racing in the Buick Regal GNX. Then we have another driver from Team Toxic. Oh, not again. It's Gaz Warning in the Chevy Monte Carlo LS. And last up, the legend, quite possibly the GOAT of King of the Mountain, it's Terrence Jr. of Redline Salvage Inc. in the Ferrari F40. He kind of had a slow qualifying time there. Yeah, he was probably just sandbagging. Well, here we go with race one of four. Top driver in points. Advances on to round two. Wasabi and Buckminster will be starting in the front row. Nakasuka Wasabi in the purple Mustang. Cyrano Buckminster in the Buick. So we have a Mustang and another car from Team Toxic on the track at one time. That's just the way the qualifying and the schedule went. I sure hope everyone signed their waivers. There is quite a line down there. Here comes Cyrano Buckminster. Here we Whoa. go. He recovers and brings it past the finish line for the win. Here comes Gaz Warning. Gaz will take fourth place. And look at that 2D, an incident free race. No crashes, no wrecks. Yet. Everything's gonna be just fine. We still don't have a track and safety crew. We didn't get one yet? I had a whole team lined up, but then they heard the news about the biohazard incident and they kind of pulled out. So we're racing a Mustang with no safety crew. Yeah, I can see why that would be of concern. Uh, yeah. I'm working on it, okay? You know what, let me talk to some people who know some people and I'll get this whole track and safety crew figured out. Hey, at this point, if you can get somebody to come here and work King of the Mountain, I, I don't even care who it is. I got you, 3D. Trust me. I know some guys who know some guys, and they're good. Sounds good. Here we go with race two. 
Cyrano Buckminster starting in the pole position. Nakasuka Wasabi right behind him in second place. Uh oh, watch out. Wasabi Ooh. breaks. Down goes the Mustang. Buckminster still in the lead. Terrence Jr. in second, closing the gap in on that Buick. Come on, Terrence, get him. Buick versus Ferrari right here. Can he get around him? It's a close one. Oh, he almost got him. A great race to the finish line by Cyrano Buckminster and Terrence Jr. We are missing gas warning, and we already know what happened to Nakasuka Wasabi. For the sake of the city, I hope gas did not crash. No, his car is okay. Well, that is a sigh of relief right there. Let's see what happened to Wasabi's car. He hits the side really hard and then flipped over into the turn. Terrence Jr. may have got a little bit into his back end, but then he gets around him for the pass. Hey, look at that. The fans are out there helping out Nakasuka Wasabi with his car. A very nice gesture indeed. And if you want to help out as well, try hitting that like button. Every time you hit the like button, a Ford Supervan gets its wings. Race Race and Peace Peace McLeod. McLeod. That will be two wins in a row for Cyrano Buckminster. He now has 10 points. Terrence Jr. in second place with five. Wasabi has three, and Gaz Warning has one. A strong start for Buckminster. Here we go with race three. Terrence Jr. in the pole. Gaz Warning on the front right. Let's go, Terrence. Terrence Jr. definitely needs this win right here. He's got this. He was just getting his tires warmed up. Terrence in the lead. Buckminster right on his tail. Gaz Warning and Wasabi way behind. Cyrano Buckminster sliding through the turn. Gaz going for the pass over Buckminster. Terrence Jr. is all alone now. Go, Terrence, go. Through the parking garage. Oh, he is gone. Gaz Warning and Cyrano fighting for second place. Go, Terrence. And it's going to be Terrence followed by Gaz Warning. Cyrano Buckminster will take third. And Nakasuka Wasabi finishes in fourth. Look at that, 3D. Terrence Jr. is back in this thing. He has 10 points, only two behind Cyrano Buckminster. That was a strong performance by Terrence Jr. with the fastest race of the night so far. Look at how well he handles these turns. He's got that Ferrari F40 dialed in. And I believe that 15.2 second track time is the fastest of Tournament 2 so far. Okay, now we just need Cyrano Buckminster to crash. 2D. And we're good. We are not wishing that on any of our drivers. Oh, we certainly are. May Cyrano crash. We do not. We wish all our drivers the best of luck. Except for Cyrano. Including Cyrano Buckminster. I need Terrence Jr. to win, 3D. Both Terrence and Buckminster starting in the back row. Terrence needs two to tie. The other two drivers are technically already out. Come on, Terrence, you can do this. Terrence Jr. hot on the tail of Gaz Warning. Wasabi trying to overtake Terrence Jr. Come on. It's a close race between all four drivers here. He's going for the overtake. Gaz Warning with a block. Oh, come on, Terrence. It's a dogfight for first place. All four drivers lined up. Gaz Warning with the breakaway. No. Terrence Jr. in second. No. And Gaz uh -huh. Warning will win race four. Come on. I'm not seeing Cyrano Buckminster or Nakasuka Wasabi. Okay. That means Terrence Jr. Whoa. wins. Yes. By one yes, baby. point. Terrence Jr. is moving on to round two. And he definitely has Nakasuka Wasabi to thank for that. Thank you, Wasabi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A tough break for Cyrano Buckminster. If he had just finished that race in fourth, we would have had a tie. But Nakasuka Wasabi turns his car sideways and completely blocks the lane, giving Terrence Jr. the win. I gotta say, I love that Mustang. You know, I can't help but notice both those cars are the same color. Purple is a popular color. It just kind of makes you wonder if the two drivers were working together. Oh, here you go with your conspiracy. That was a clear and obvious block by Wasabi. I personally wouldn't be surprised if he's on the red line salvaging payroll. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't, but none of that matters because Terrence Jr. is moving on to round two. That is true, Terrence moves on to round two with a time of 15.2151 seconds. Welcome back to King of the Mountain season four, tournament number two. Well, 3D, I gave you my word and I have delivered. We have a new track crew. Oh, really? Where are they? Uh, that's them right there. That looks like a demolition derby team. Yeah, they kind of do that as well. W that's a terrible idea. They're good, 3D. Trust me. Up first, we have Coots Fuzzface of Bent Rod Racing driving in the Mustang SVO. Coots Fuzzface. Okay. Then we have Eric Brewski Brewer in the Honda City Turbo 2. What a cute little Fisher Price car that is. Up next is Miles in front for Team Winner Diecast Trying. He's from Australia in the Audi Sport Quattro. And last up tonight, we have Cody Madison of Cooter's Garage in the Camaro i Rock C. That's a cool paint job right there. The drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points advances on to round two of Tournament 2 of Season 4 of King of the Mountain. There you go. You got it all out. Here we go. Let's go racing. Coots out in the lead in the green Mustang, followed by Miles in front. Here they go to the first big turn. Miles is not in front right now. Coots is currently dominating this race. Look how far ahead that Mustang is. Let's hope he keeps that car on the road. Here he comes through the garage 
And there's Eric Brewer in second in the Honda City Turbo 2. Such a cute little car. And Coots Fuzzface will take race one, followed by Eric Brewer. Miles in front comes in third, followed by Cody Madison. And there's that Mustang up on the curb. Luckily, he missed all the spectators. But in case of the inevitable crash, the track crew is standing by and ready to assist. I'm not sure how comfortable I feel about this new track crew that you've got here. Think about it, 3D. Who's better to help out with a wreck than guys who wreck cars all the time for a living? I don't think that makes them any more qualified. Just give them a chance, 3D. They'll do a smashing job. That's kind of what I'm worried about. Here we go with race two. Eric Bruski Brewer in the pole position in the red Honda. Cody Madison to his right in the Camaro IROC Z. Let's see what that little baby car can do. And there they go down the track for race two. Eric Brewer in the lead. Coots in the Mustang close behind. Cody Madison falls back to third. He gets tangled up with Miles in front. Hey, that little Honda can move. Coots Fuzzface tapping on the back end of that Honda City Turbo. Eric Brewer with the block. Here they go through the garage, over the bridge, and this race is gonna go to Eric Brewski Brewer in the Honda City Turbo 2. That was an impressive run for such a little car. Oh, you better watch out. And here comes Cody Madison to take fourth place. That win will tie Eric Bruski Brewer with Coots Fuzzface. They both have eight. Miles in front has four. Cody Madison has two. That is two races in a row with no DNFs, and we have a tiny little car and a Mustang on the track. I think the new track crew is keeping these guys in line. A little intimidation can be good. Trust me, you don't want to get wrecked by the Race City Wreckers. The Race City Wreckers. See, that has me really concerned. Don't be concerned. They know how to break wrecks and wreck brakes. We just need them to tow cars and rescue people. Yeah, they probably do that too. They probably do that. Look, Crazy Jimmy said these guys are good, so they're great. Well, luckily we haven't needed their services yet. Also, did I mention they have discount pricing? Discount pricing, you say? Yes, sir, I have the ad right here. Let me see that. Half off toes, frequent wrecker miles. These guys are great. I told you. Great job finding these guys. Hey, Jimmy's got connections. There goes Cody Madison with the overtake of the Camaro, cutting off miles in front in the Audi. This fight is not over yet. Here they go through the parking garage. A close race over the bridge, and this one's gonna go to Cody Madison. Cody Madison breaking his fourth place finishing streak. And it appears we lost Eric Bruski Brewer over at the garage. Is he flirting with that girl out there? I'm not sure he's got several ladies out there looking at him. She is making some serious eye contact right now. Well, that's still gonna be a DNF for Eric Bruski Brewer. Look at this overtake right here by Cody Madison. Cuts off Miles in front in the gray Audi, blocks him all the way around the turn, and then manages to keep him in the rear view all the way down to the finish. Miles is still having trouble staying out in front in this race. Yeah, with a name like that, you might want to bring a faster car. Oh, 3D with the burn. I'm just saying. Ouch. Here we go with race four, Coots Fuzzface, currently in the lead with 10 points. Eric Bruski Brewer has eight. Miles in front and Cody Madison both have seven. That's a three point spread from top to bottom. This is still anybody's race. And here they go. They're all fired up for race four. Miles in front is out in front. Let's see if he can stay there this time. Coots Fuzzface currently in second in the green Mustang. Uh oh, Whoa. he's going AWOL. Miles almost fell apart right there. It's a tight group right now. Coots Fuzzface trying to pass. Miles is bouncing around. Contact through the garage. Eric Brewer moves into second. And that race will go to Miles in front. Let's see what the scoreboard says. We got a tie! <laughs> Coots Fuzzface and Miles in front wow. have tied with 12 points each. It's tiebreaker race time, baby. Tiebreaker race. I thought Coots Fuzzface had this whole thing wrapped up. If he just finished in second place, it would have been all over. But keep your eye on that little red car right here, cutting on the inside through the parking garage, passes up Coots to take second place forcing Coots Fuzzface and Miles in front into a tiebreaker race. Not too bad for that little Honda City Turbo 2. Here we go, head-to-head -head racing action. Coots Fuzzface has the inside lane advantage because he had the fastest time tonight between these two drivers. The winner of this race will advance on to round two, and here they go. All right, let's do this. Coots has the lead, Miles in front, should be called Miles in back. Ooh, the burn. I mean, look how far behind he is. It's not over yet, 3D. Coots Fuzzface clearly outperforming that Audi. I mean, this isn't much of a race at all. I got to give it to Coots. He's doing an amazing job taming that Mustang. He is making that Mustang look good. I wouldn't go that far. And there's a clean win. Oh, Whoa. God. Fatality. What happened to the Audi? I don't know, but he took out somebody. I was just about to say we had some nice, clean, incident-free racing tonight. But there goes Miles in front, ruining all of that. Nothing like a little vehicular manslaughter to end the race. Well, luckily, the track crew is right there to do their job. I'm excited to see them in action. They are some top-notch professionals. I'm glad to hear it. Boom, look at that. Well, we're hoping that fan is going to be okay. I'm getting word that the track crew is still not there. I believe they're in the middle of doing a little segment for Rock TV, and 
They'll probably help that guy when they're done. We hired them to help with the Rex, not do rock TV segments. You know how these celebrity types are. Well, there's your winner, Coots Fuzzface. I feel like I'm insulting him every time I say that name. That's what he wrote down. Coots will be moving on to round two in his Mustang SVO. Welcome back to King of the Mountain season four, tournament number two, round one, group four. I heard we have some Mazdas racing tonight. Yes, we have two RX-7s, a Honda Civic, and a Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS. One of these things is not like the others. Let's go ahead and take a look. First up, we have Johnny Smoke of SST Diecast Racing in the Mazda Savannah RX-7 FC3S. Also driving in a Mazda Savannah RX-7 is Pengi from R1 Racing, coming to us all the way from England. Then we have Carter Allen of Ghetto Luxury Customs in the Honda Civic EF. Check out those rims. And finally, last up, in the Monte Carlo SS is Psychopath of Mad Dogs Repo and Racing. I think the Mazdas and the Honda have the home field advantage here. We'll see, here we go. The drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points advances on to round two. And they're off. The two Mazdas starting off in the front row, Johnny Smoke in the darker blue car, Pengi in the light blue back in third as Carter Allen pulls into second. Carter Allen is right on the tail of that RX-7. A little bump there, Carter Allen trying to catch up. Johnny Smoke now blazing ahead through the parking garage. There's a hit from Pengi. Uh-oh, Psychopat just ran into the barrier and knocked it over. I guess the barrier did its job, kind of. I think it's supposed to stay up. Well, hey, no one got hit. And race one will go to Johnny Smoke in the blue Mazda RX-7. A pretty fast run there for Johnny Smoke, but Carter Allen in that little Honda was keeping up for the most part. He was, Carter Allen takes second place and Pengi will take third, but it will be a DNF for Psychopat. It seems like if you add Crazy or Psycho to their name, they just start driving all over the place. Apparently so. Okay, here we go with race two, Pengi in the pole position in the light blue Mazda, Psychopat to the right in the green Monte Carlo SS. Let's see if Psycho Pat can make it all the way to the finish line this time. Or will he just get another DNF? I don't know, but he's crazy, and you know me, I love crazy. Pengi starting this race off with a big lead. Johnny Smoke in second, Psycho Pat in third. Pengi is just flying down the track. The RX-7s are owning this race. Here comes Pengi through the garage. Johnny Smoke still in second. Carter Allen all the way back and forth, and Pengi. Uh -oh, watch out. Here comes Carter. Oh, that's going to leave a dent. A rough finish there for Psycho Pat and Carter Allen. Nothing a little Bondo can't fix. Let's see the replay of what went wrong here. You can see Psycho Pat starting to swerve. We're actually lucky that wasn't worse than it was. We've seen some bad wrecks down here at the intersection. Well, don't you worry, 3D. The Race City Wreckers are ready to help anytime they're needed. Well, hopefully we can just continue to have a clean race and we won't need any assistance from the track crew. Come on, you know you want to see them in action. Sure, I'm curious, but I just want to see these guys have a clean race, that's all. Everybody loves a good wreck. Here we go with race three. Psychopath starting in the pole position in the green Monte Carlo. Carter Allen in the blue Civic trying to pass him. Both Mazdas get tangled up in the back. A Ooh. hard cut by Carter Allen. And now Psychopath pulls into first. It's a close one. Which of these two is going to come out on top? Carter Allen trying to find a way around that Monte Carlo. Come on, Carter. We've got contact. Carter Allen gets turned sideways. And race three will go to Psychopath. And I don't see anyone else coming down here. That's going to mean we have a triple, triple DNF. DNF. Wow. That right there just put Psycho Pat back into this race. He is only one point behind Johnny Smoke. Johnny Smoke getting stuck over there after the first big turn. Look at this pass right here by Psycho Pat. Carter Allen went for a really hard block, but that was a risky move, as you can see. Sometimes it pays off, but in this case, it did not. Let's see what happened here right at the exit of this garage. There goes Pangy getting tangled up in the mix in the light blue car. He hits the back end of Carter Allen at the same time Psycho Pat was blocking. And that's what got Carter Allen sideways and stuck on the bridge. This is it, race four. Johnny Smoke has eight. Pengi and Psycho Pat both have seven. Carter Allen has four. Anyone here can technically still win. Carter Allen and Johnny Smoke in the front row. Here we go. Carter Allen currently in the lead. Johnny Smoke in second. Pengi has some contact with Psycho Pat. Carter Allen really moving now. That little Civic is gone, 3D. He's in a race all by himself right now. He needs to win this to have any type of chance here. Uh -oh. Whoa! Carter Allen down. A hard oh. hit from Johnny Smoke. He's upside down Ouch. as well. But there's Pengi to push Johnny Smoke through for the win. Wow. That was crazy. What a finish to this race. Johnny Smoke gets by with a little help from his Mazda Arc 7 friend from across the pond and wins tonight's race. I think Pengi said, hey, one of us has got to win. If it's not going to be me, it might as well be Smoke. This was wild. Carter Allen had this race, fell apart on the bridge, 
Then Johnny Smoke crashed, he was upside down, Pengi flips him over and pushes him across the finish line. And there goes Psychopath for the final blow. Here it is again from the finish cam. Carter Allen jumping up onto the curb, flips over. You can see Johnny Smoke trying to get around the car. He clearly was not going to stop. Ooh, that guy just took an arc seven to the face. I think he just passed out from the excitement. He definitely got hit by the car. You know what? That is unconfirmed. Hey, here comes the Ray City Wreckers, baby, right on time. Wow, they are just as bad as the track crew we had in the beginning. Uh, excuse me, did you not hear him use his horn? Yeah, big deal. The other crew never used their horns. What good does it do to use your horn and then you smash right into the car? They're getting the job done, 3D, okay? They're getting the job done. Well, I guess it's better than nothing. Johnny Smoke will be advancing on to round two. His fastest time of the night was 15.4774 seconds. Right behind Terrence Jr. Welcome back to King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament 2, Round 1, Group 5. You know, 3D, I'm kind of sensing an evil technological presence here in Race City tonight. An evil technological presence. It's something in the air. I don't know what it is, but it's something. I don't know, but we do have a Mustang racing. I knew it. First up tonight is Sneaky Bob for Vapor Diecast Racing in the Cadillac Seville. Hey, we got a caddy. Then check out this awesome paint job. This is Jank Hinky for Go On and Get Racing in the Porsche 944 Turbo. Okay, now we have some trouble here. It's Angela S of Cloaked After Dark in the Terminator Ford Mustang. That's pretty cool. It's Judgment Day 3D. I think you're overreacting. Last up, we have Annie Chase in the silver Nissan Skyline R30. This is going to be bad. Skynet is coming. Is neural net-based artificial intelligence really that bad? Yes, it is. Well, it should make for an interesting race. Here we go with race one. Sneaky Bob in the white and purple Cadillac starting in the pole position. Jenk Hinky to his right in the green Porsche. Sneaky Bob out in front. Angela S. in second place. Jenk Hinky in the green car spins around. We should get these people off the streets. This is not safe. Calm down, Tootie. It's going to be fine. Sneaky Bob swerving around here. And down goes the barrier again. They need to mount that thing in place. And race one goes to Sneaky Bob. Uh-oh, watch how he's swerving. Ooh. Fatality. I warned you, 3D. It was a little fender bender at the intersection. What? Nothing too bad, though. Two spectators are down already. It was a mild bump at the most. There's Annie Chase. She must have stopped to take a picture at the Transformer exhibit. Oh, God. We got Cyberdyne and the Decepticons. I don't believe that one's a Decepticon. Well, I don't trust any robots. You do realize this is the 3D Bot Maker channel. That's always concerned me. Okay, well... It appears those spectators will be fine. Let's see that replay one more time. Sneaky Bob had a big part in that incident, but again, a mild bump at the most. Nothing a little 530 synthetic can't take care of. That Terminator Mustang is clearly out for blood. It wasn't even their fault. Maybe not, but Angela, if that's her real name, wanted to hit those spectators. Anyways, here we go with race two. Jank Hinky in the pole position in the green Porsche. Andy Chase in the front right in the silver skyline. Jank has the lead here. Sneaky Bob takes over second. Angela all the way in the back of the pack. Jank, two wheels up on the wall, recovers. And now it's a chase. Sneaky Bob trying to get around that Porsche, but he falls back. Jank, Hinky up on two wheels again, but he takes... Whoa, my... Fatality. I hate to say it, but that's going to be all night 3D. Okay, that was a bad wreck. This is man versus machine, and the machines are winning. I'm not sure how many people got hit there. I don't see anyone. I think that's because they're under the car. Let's go to the replay here. Jank Hinky goes slightly off to the left. Fatality. Okay, Tootie, we get it. It was a slip of the finger, sorry. And we must point out that Angela S. in the Mustang had nothing to do with this wreck. We can't cancel that possibility out. Here comes the Race City Wreckers to help out. He drove a little too far there. Come on back a little bit. I'm sure he'll find the car. Let's check out the replay from the Cyberdyne Skycam. Are you serious? What? We're using Cyberdyne Systems technology? Yeah, check out this awesome Skycam. It's up in space. Skycam? Skynet? Yeah, they used a Skynet to send the video down here to our studio. Okay, so we're not watching a race here. We're watching the end of humanity unfold before us as the machines take over, led by their leader, Angela S. Okay, have you been eating Steve's special brownies again? I might have had one or two. They're delicious. Steve, come on. I told you. It's good, no? You know they make him more paranoid than he already is. Uh, hey, guys, I'm right here. Everything's going to be fine today. Happy Judgment Day to you as well. Andy Chase leading the chase, followed by Jank Hinky. And he currently only has one point on the board. This win would definitely help out. We got contact. Jank slams into the side of that skyline. And there goes Sneaky Bob. Sneaks around Jank Hinky to take second place on that race. That win for Annie Chase will add five points to her score. And look at this picture right here. All four drivers down at the intersection. No crashes, no collision. 
everyone lined up just nicely, showing us everything is going to be just fine. It's the calm before the storm, 3D. The storm is coming. Let's see that pass again by Sneaky Bob. You can see these two cars in the front slowing down. Sneaky Bob back there in the white and purple Cadillac gets around the Porsche, bumps into the back end of the skyline, and that second place finish will add three points to Sneaky Bob's score. He is now sitting on top with 11 points. Jank Hinky in second place with nine. Angela S has six, as well as Annie Chase. If I'm doing the math correctly, there is still a possibility for any of these drivers to make it through to round two. So let's see what happens on this fourth and final race. Destruction and mayhem is what's gonna happen. Sneaky Bob in the lead. Jank and Angela fighting for second. It's the end of the world as whoa, we... Whoa, whoa, we don't have clearance for that song. Who cares, 3D? It's all over. Sneaky Bob swerving around here. Here comes Jank trying to pass, but Sneaky Bob holds on to the lead, and Sneaky Bob will be your winner of the night. Here it comes. Whoa, a hard hit into the curb by Angel S, but everyone is safe and sound. Wow, I really thought that last race was going to be like the end of the world. It's completely fine, 2D. I'm kind of hungry now. I got the munchies. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Hey, Steve, you got any more of those brownies? Oh, no, no, no. You don't need any more of those. Here, have some Cheetos. Ooh, Cheetos. Sneaky Bob, definitely the faster car here tonight. But there was a lot of bumping and swerving around. It makes you wonder if Sneaky Bob could keep that Cadillac going straight. How fast of a time could he have gotten? Probably right around 15. Well, regardless, Sneaky Bob will be advancing on to round two with a track time of 15.6054 seconds. You know, I feel like I really learned something here today. Uh, things aren't always what you think they are. Clearly, man and machines can coexist. I'm proud to be part of the 3D Bot Maker team. And I really love you, man. How many brownies did you eat? I don't know, but they tasted amazing. Welcome back to King of the Mountain, Season 4, Tournament Number 2, Round 1, Group 6. Well, 3D, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. And I hate to admit it, but you did kind of predict the robot apocalypse, which is upon Race City. Welcome to the age of Skynet. Well, these machines aren't going to stop us. First up, we have Samukako Nasuka of the Philippines driving for Mokong competition in the Ford Mustang SVO. Then we have Buddy D. Taylor of SDS Racing in the Mazda Savannah RX-7 FC3S. Then driving in the Toyota MR2 for Outlaw Memphis Racing, it's Crazy Amy. I wonder if she's related to... Maybe. And last up is Superman Dion for the Hot Wheels Boys driving in the Ferrari F40. That is an absolutely beautiful looking car. And you know what they say about red. It goes faster. It's a proven fact. Here we go with race one of four. Nasuka starting in the pole position in the blue Mustang. Buddy Taylor on the front right. Top driver in points advances on to round two. Samukaku Nasuka currently out in the lead. We already have one Mustang moving on to round two. Can Nasuka join them? That's one too many Mustangs if you ask me. Buddy Taylor hot in the heels of Nasuka. Here they come to the garage over the bridge and race one will go to Samu Kakunasuka in the blue Mustang. Superman Dion coming in fourth place. I have high hopes for that Ferrari. Hopefully he's just warming up his tires. Speaking of Ferraris, we have a Ferrari that's already moved on around two as well. The one driven by Terrence Jr. Terrence Jr., a proven legend on the track. Superman Dion has a legendary name. We'll find out if he lives up to it tonight. Well, hopefully we don't see any big air. Oh, I want to see big air. This isn't the DRC. I still want to see big air. Well, you're going to have to wait for the return of the DRC because we don't have any jumps here. You know, that bridge kind of looks like a jump. It's not a jump and don't give anyone any bad ideas. I never give bad ideas. I can make a list. Well, then that will be a list of genius ideas. Here we go with race two. This time we have Buddy Taylor on the front left in the Mazda. Superman Dion in the front right in the Ferrari. I'm just going to call him Dion because he has not yet earned the name Superman. Fair enough. Here we go with race two. Buddy Taylor out in the lead, followed by Nasuka. Dion falls back to third. Not very Superman-like if you ask me. Nasuka right on the tail of Buddy Taylor. Whoa, he's bouncing around. That's the type of behavior we've come to expect from Mustangs. That leaves Buddy Taylor all alone on the <laughs> wide open... Whoa! That's also what we expect from Mustangs. Samu Kaku Nasuka wipes out at the entrance of the parking garage. That means Dion will now take second place. Followed by Crazy Amy. Well, I'd say that race was actually quite predictable. Hey, I'm just glad all the spectators are safe. Well, that robot's kind of crushing someone. Speaking of crushing, here comes the Race City Records. Look at how fast and efficient they are. That actually was an impressive response time. Here's the replay of that crash. It appears he slammed into the light post. Look, I've said it before, I'll say it again. A Mustang is going to do what a Mustang is going to do. You don't really drive a Mustang as much as you're going along for the ride. And let me tell you, 
It's a wild ride, 3D. I'll take your word for it. Here we go with race three. Buddy D. Taylor on top of the scoreboard with eight points. Samu Kakunasuka in second with five. Crazy Amy and Superman Dion both have four. I'm still waiting to see something super from Dion. Well, so far, Dion is leading race three. Whoa, Buddy Taylor slams into the palm tree. These guys are reckless. All that chaos created a big lead here for Dion. He is all alone on an open track. Let's go, Dion. Let's see that Ferrari fly. Dion's through the garage. There goes Buddy Taylor. And Dion picks up the win on race three followed by Buddy D. Taylor. Here comes Nasuka and the Blue Mustang to take third. And Crazy Amy finishes the race going backwards. Okay, there may be a relation to Crazy Jimmy. That is his signature move. It could be a sister, maybe a cousin. Let's see what happened on the turn. Crazy Amy up on two wheels, got pushed into the palm tree by Nasuka. Then she proceeded to finish the race going backwards. That's quite impressive. This is it. Race four, Buddy Taylor has 11. Superman Dion has nine. Samu Kaku Nasuka has seven. Crazy Amy only has five, so it's over for her. I think this race is coming down to the Mazda or the Ferrari. Well, the Ferrari is two points behind the Mazda. Crazy Amy out in the lead. Nasuka pulls into second, followed by Dion. Come on, Dion, let's get that Ferrari up there. Crazy Amy with a good lead here, headed towards the parking garage. I think this race may come down to who takes second place. Wait a minute, here comes Nasuka! Whoa! Whoa! Who won? I am not sure that was a close! Tight finish between Nasuka and Crazy Amy. What's that mean for the score? We're not sure who won yet, but Buddy Taylor came in fourth place. That means if Samu Kaka Nasuka beat Crazy Amy to the line, we will have a tie. Wow. Let's see if we can tell from this angle. Look at that right there. Ooh, that was close. We're going to have to see that from a different angle. Here we go with the finish cam. You know, if you got the pass, this is going to be one of the greatest passes we've had this season. Oh, right there at the line. I cannot tell. Ah, uh, man, this is intense. Let's go to the Skynet cam. Oh, boy. And Samu oh Kakunasuka beat Crazy Amy to the line. Wow. That means we have a tie between Buddy Taylor and Samu Kakunasuka. This is awesome, 3D. This is awesome. We will have a tiebreaker race. Nasuka has the inside lane advantage because he had the faster track time here tonight. This tiebreaker race will be won and done. Here we go. Mustang versus Mazda. Nasuka in the lead. Gets caught up on the side wall there. Whoa. Buddy Taylor now out in front. That was a critical mistake by Nasuka. Buddy Taylor up on two wheels for a second there. Nasuka is getting closer. Can he do it again, 3D? He's right on his bumper going through the garage. Oh, baby. Whoa. Whoa. I think we just... Wait a minute. He's back? Buddy D. Taylor... Oh, God. Fatality. Well, I think we all saw that coming. Well, the Mustang thing, not the disappearing car. There's so much to unpack with this last race. The win does go to Samu Kaku Nasuka, who just ran into several spectators. But what happened to Buddy Taylor right here? I think he was going for the over-the-bridge shortcut, realized that was a bad idea, rolled back onto the track, and just decided to finish the race in the normal way. I seriously thought he went into the water. It's like... Lakitu caught him and just tossed him back onto the track. Oh, good old Lakitu. He's a very helpful Koopa. A surprising finish, to say the least. Buddy Taylor just blew that race at the end. It was his. I think he saw the exit arrow and thought that meant to go up. Or maybe he heard your suggestion about getting big air off the bridge. Hey, I am not a professional here. No one should be taking my advice about anything. Well, we can certainly agree on that. Hey. There you have it. Samu Kaku Nasuka of the Philippines. We'll be advancing on to round two in the Ford Mustang SVO with a track time of 15.4072. Not bad, he's right behind Terrence Jr. Welcome back to King of the Mountain. It's season four, tournament two, round one, group seven. Now 3D, I've heard some rumors. We have a new bridge camera? Yes, we do. After the events of last week, we have a bridge cam. Oh man, I cannot wait to see someone just drive right off the bridge. Hopefully that won't happen. Fingers crossed. Our first driver tonight is oh boy. Rico the Robot. I thought we were done with robots. Rico is in a Porsche 928. Then we have an actual human driver. It's Gwyn Goyo. He's driving in the Nissan Skyline R30. We've got a lot of blue cars today. Up next is Clutch and Kitten in the Honda CRX. Oh, I thought that was Cluck and Chicken. Uh, no, apparently it's a cat. Well, last up, we have Super Chief of the Oklahoma Outlaws driving in the Audi Sport Quattro. Drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points advances on to round two. Rico the robot will be starting in the pole position. This is going to be a disaster. Why? Everyone knows robots can't drive. Well, let's give them a chance. It's going to be bad. Rico the robot out in the lead in that gold bronze colored Porsche. Rico first to the big turn. 
Clutch and Kitten currently in second. Let's hope Rico doesn't go into Terminator mode. I think we'll be fine, Tootie. I do not trust that car. Rico's through the garage. Whoa! Oh, I told you. Rico the robot drives off the track. Rico just self-destructed. And that opens up the door for Cluck and Chicken. Mm -hmm. I mean, Clutch and Kitten. Some golden fried Cluck and Chicken. Okay, you're messing me up with the name here. It's already difficult to say. Hey, I like my Clutch and Chicken extra crispy. It's kitten. It's, it's a cat. That wouldn't taste very good, I don't think. Okay, forget the name right now. Let's look at what happened to Rico the Robot. I'll tell you what happened. He had his target set on those spectators on the bridge. Lucky for them, robots are bad drivers, so he couldn't hit him. It is a difficult turn to make. We have seen quite a few incidents in that section. Here come the Race City Wreckers, and there they go. I think they missed him. Well, hey, let's go to our new bridge cam. Oh, there we go. Now we're talking. Looking at the bridge from this angle, I can see the temptation of why drivers want to drive up the side. While it is similar to a stunt ramp. Definitely a ramp. It's very dangerous. No one should ever attempt driving up the bridge. Unless you're driving in King of the Mountain. No, definitely not. Everyone should stay on the road. What about Rico the robot? He's a robot. Rico also needs to stay on the road. Maybe Cluck and Kitten? No, everyone, please stay on the road, including CK. Who's CK? Cluck and Kitten. I mean, Clutch and the driver of the Honda CRX. Rico the robot spins out of control. No surprise there. Gwen Goyo out in the lead in the skyline. Everyone else trailing way behind. Here comes Super Chief in second place in the Audi. CK in third. And Gwen Goyo gets a track time of 15.8514 seconds. Ooh, Super Chief did not like that. Okay, let's calm it down, Super Chief. We do not need that type of energy on the track tonight. And what do you know? Rico the Robo has L record. Okay, so this particular robot is not good at driving. It's all of them, 3D. It's all of them. Let's go to the replay and see what happened. You can see Rico spin around back there, got tangled up with Super Chief, but Super Chief and CK managed to get around Rico's car. And here comes the Race City Wreckers. They provide such quality service. If they can't tell you, they'll push you. Let's see what happened to Clutch and Kitten. Look at that drift. Can we see this from the bridge cam as well? Sure, let's go to the bridge cam. Look at this drift, right into a stop, posing for the cameraman. That kitten's got some style. They certainly do, but they kind of forgot to finish the race, so that's going to be a DNF for Clutch and Kitten. Here we go with race three, Super Chief in the pole position, CK on the front right. I just want to point out that Rico the Robot has two DNFs in a row. Yes, we saw that. Just making sure. It's a close group of cars going into the first big turn here. Gwen Goyo and CK door to door. CK now moves into second, and now Rico overtakes Gwen Goyo to take third. Super Chief still has a lead, but here comes CK. Can he find a way around that Audi? No, he cannot. Super Chief takes the win. And what do you know? Here comes Rico the Robot. Ouch. Ooh. And Gwingoya will slam into fourth place. I thought I was going to have to bring out the fatality button for a minute there. Hey, we're three races in. Nobody's been hit. Yet. I'd say that's a good race so far. I would agree with you. There's no Mustangs out here tonight. But we have Rico the Robot. True. Which clearly needs some kind of firmware update or something because that car is all over the track tonight. Okay, I hear where you're coming from. But Rico the Robot did just finish a race. So maybe it is adapting oh boy. to Race City. And it's now learning how to make it down the track. And that's exactly how the second robot apocalypse begins. Well, hopefully not. Let's look at the scores going into the fourth and final race. Super Chief on top with 10. Gwen Goyo has nine. Cluckin. You're malfunctioning. Clutchin. There you go. Kitten has eight points. Rico has two, so he's out. But all the other drivers have a chance. Who's going to move on to round two? CK pulls into first. Rico right behind him. Rico is slowing down traffic for Super Chief. Gwen Goyo all the way back in fourth place. CK way out in front in that Honda CRX, but Rico the Robot is gaining ground. Here they come to the finish, and Clutchin Kitten takes the win. Rico comes in second, Super Chief in third, and Clutchin Kitten will be moving on to round two by one point over Super Chief. And there goes Gwen Goyo. Better luck next time. You know, if Super Chief had just found a way around Rico the Robot, we would have had another tie here. Which would have been great, but no. Rico the Robot had to ruin the race. I wouldn't say it was ruined. It was still a good race. We could have had a tiebreaker race, but Rico the Robot, who had no chance of moving on, decided to come in second place. See, it's learning. Somebody destroy that car. There you have it. Clutch and Kitten, the most difficult name to say on the list here, will be moving on to round two with a track time of 16.4613 seconds. I'm just glad the robot is not advancing on to round two, and hopefully we won't ever have to see another robot race again. Who knows, robot racing may be the future. A dark, dark future. Welcome back to Race City. 
It is time for King of the Mountain Season 4, Tournament 2, Round 1, Group 8. I am looking forward to this one. From what I understand, we got some F-bodies racing. Yes, we do. A Camaro and two Firebirds. Oh, you know I'm all about that Pontiac life. Let's go. Let's check out the cars. Up first, we have Psycho Steve from Backstab Motorsports driving in that blue Pontiac Firebird. Great color, he's got the T-tops out, I love it. Then from Chicago, Illinois, it's El Gato Chino from Little Green Man Garage in the Buick Regal Stalker. Oh, who is this beauty right here? Miss Lola, driving in that red Pontiac Firebird, my goodness. And last up we have Robert Ray of Houston, Texas in the two-tone black and red Camaro I Rock Z. Another great car, I kinda like them all. But I think I gotta go with Miss Lola because that's the name of my dog. Well, that's nice. We are encouraging responsible racing here in the 3 Botmaker Diecast Racing League. As you can see, it's been four races since our last fatality. I think if we can get that number up to like 12, we'll have a pizza party or something. What is this, elementary school? We're encouraging driver safety, okay? Psycho Steve and Lee, but there goes Miss Lola overtaking oh, Steve, oh. and Psycho Steve takes the lead right back. Oh, come on, get him back, Lola. Steve has a good sized lead here now. And race one will go to Psycho Steve, followed by Miss Lola and Robert Ray. Well, that was an exciting first race. Yes, two overtakes in race one. We are missing El Gato Chino. Looks like he's stuck in the parking garage. Not a good start for the cat. Let's go to the replay. Look right here. Miss Lola goes on the inside on that turn. A great pass, but then she gets caught up on the side wall. And Psycho Steve just went right through that opening. Looks like Lola almost flipped that Firebird on that turn as well. Yeah, it looked like that hit from El Gato Chino may have kept her on the track. Cats helping dogs. Such a nice sentiment. Okay, Miss Lola is not a dog. That's kind of disrespectful. Well, my dog's name is Lola. Yes, but that doesn't make everyone named Lola a dog. I'm not following. If I name my dog 2D, would that mean all 2Ds are dogs? Oh, you can call me a dog. Woof, woof. Okay, well. Why must I be like that? Why must I chase the cat? Okay, race two. Nothing but the dog in me. I do appreciate the atomic dog reference. But race two is starting with El Gato Chino in the pole position. Psycho Steve and Robert Ray right behind. Steve pulls into second, slides around that corner. There goes El Gato Chino in the Buick Stalker. He seems to be up and moving this time. Psycho Steve in distant second. Here they go through the garage. Steve closing in on Elgato Chino, and he almost found a way around him, but ran out of time. That will get some points on the board for Elgato Chino. I do not see. Oh, there he is. I believe that is the car of Robert Ray. Yes, it is. What happened to Miss Lola? There she is, stuck over on the second big turn. Oh, good. At least she's okay. That will be a double DNF right there. Let's see what happened to Robert Ray. He was driving in reverse and then just flipped over on the turn. A lot of people think that reverse driving is easy. It is not. If you're going to attempt it, you have to go to the Crazy Jimmy School of Driving. They have night courses, right? Absolutely. Psycho Steve sitting on top of the scoreboard with eight points. Elgato Chino has five. Miss Lola three, Robert Ray two. Robert Ray and Lola in the front row. Robert Ray has the early lead going into the first big turn. Whoa, Psycho Steve gets sideways and stuck. Robert Ray still on front. Miss Lola not far behind. Come on, Lola, go fetch. Again, still not appropriate. I don't see the problem with it. Lola knocking on the door of Robert Ray, trying to get around him. Here they go across the bridge. And Robert Ray will take his first win of the night, followed by Miss Lola. And it appears we have another double DNF. Quite a few DNFs tonight. All drivers have at least one. This will be Elgato Chino's second DNF in pretty much the same spot as this first one. Does he think he's supposed to park in the garage? I don't know what he's thinking, but I do know that he's losing. Well, there goes Psycho Steve also getting stuck. This was a pretty exciting race between Robert Ray and Miss Lola. Robert Ray swerving around. Lola tried to pass on the outside, but ends up running into the back end of Robert Ray's Camaro. But going into the fourth race, the scores are close here. Psycho Steve has eight. Robert Ray has seven. Miss Lola has six and El Gato Chino with five. Miss Lola and Psycho Steve in the front row here. Let's go, Miss Lola. This is it, the final race. Top driver in points will advance on to round two. Robert Ray hot in the tail of Miss Lola. Was that a dog reference? No, I was talking about the tail of the car. Okay. Miss Lola out in the lead, but here comes Robert Ray closing in on that Firebird. We got contact going into the garage and race four will go to Miss Lola, followed by Robert Ray. Once again, we appear to be missing two cars. That's our third double DNF. And it's going to be Miss Lola advancing on to round two with 11 points. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Good girl. Good girl. Tootie. Wait a minute. What happened here? I think I know what happened. Fatality. Oh, come on. How? Psycho Steve was clearly out for blood. The guardrails are still in place. Yeah, that's not going to stop someone named Psycho Steve. We were doing so good. 
Let's try to see what happened to Steve. Oh, there he goes right here. Boom. Fatality. I don't understand how he got his car over the guardrail. I think the bigger question is why is that guy mowing that huge area of grass with a lawnmower? You know how Ray said he's trying to cut back on expenses and stuff like that. At least get him a riding mower. Well, that is an unfortunate ending to tonight's race. But Miss Lola will be advancing on to round two with a track time of 16.3732 seconds. Wait a minute, is that Lola? That is Miss Lola's car. No, I mean the dog on the car. That's Lola, that's my dog. I don't think the dog was driving the car. Though. I knew that dog was up to something. She would disappear in the evening. Then I would hear Tyra screech and she would mysteriously show up. I really think this is all one big coincidence. Who knew she was a legit driver? Wow. Welcome back to King of the Mountain, season four, Tournament number two, round one, group nine. It is nice to be back in the studio with Rudy. Yes, it is. Race City is getting back in order after the Tournament of Terror. If you haven't seen that video, you got to check it out. Yeah, things got a little crazy. Let's see who's racing tonight. We've got Dude Race Walker from Diecast Dude Racing in the Nissan Silvia S13. Dude, that's a nice car. Then coming from Ontario, Canada in the Mazda Savannah RX-7, it's Smokin' Joe Ferguson. That's another good looking car. Then we have Chicken George from NDR Whoa. driving in the Chevy Citation. That's what we would call a barn find. And last up in the Porsche 944 Turbo, driving for awesome racing, it's Gary Gearhead. All these cars are great and also, They've got some good driver names. Yes, we should have a good race here. We've got Dude Race Walker in the pole position, Smokin' Joe Ferguson on the front right. And they're off for race one. The top driver in points after four races will advance on to round two. Smokin' Joe gets spun around there going backwards. I like that, a little crazy Jimmy style. Race Walker out in front followed by Chicken George. Here they go through the Fujiwara turn. Dude Race Walker looking strong in this race. Through the car park and Dude Race Walker We'll take the first win. Let me get the button. Oh, boy. Oh, my. Fatality. Well, I guess King of the Mountain is certainly back. Yes, with the inevitable fatality. Let's see. Chicken George is upside down. Several spectators are also out. And Gary the Gearhead is also flipped over. That's a DNF for him. That's a pretty rough start for this group of cars. It was going pretty good here. Look at the dude. Makes it past the finish line. We can't really see what happened from this angle. You'll see right here, Smokin' Joe backs into Chicken George. That forces him to bounce off the wall and then sadly into the spectators on the other side. And then right here, the dude hit the curb and may have just grazed those spectators with his fender. I don't know. That guy flew into the building. I'm not sure if that's grazing. An aggressive graze, you know. Are there different levels of grazing? Well, there is a grazing that cattle and sheep do. It was kind of like getting hit by a stampede, I guess. Exactly. An aggressive graze. Well, let's hope we have a better graze-free race two. Smokin' Joe Ferguson in the pole position. After that first race, I think we may understand why Smokin' is in his name and it has nothing to do with speed. Well, he is moving pretty fast right now. Chicken George fighting with Gary Gearhead for third. Ferguson in front, followed by Dude Race Walker. Slides around the corner. Joe Ferguson keeping that distance out in front. And race two will go to Smokin' Joe Ferguson. And here comes Chicken George. Seems like we are still missing one driver. What happened to Gary Gearhead? A DNF is what happened to Gary Gearhead. That's gonna be two DNFs in a row for Gary Gearhead. Not looking good so far for Team Awesome Racing. Well, at least he didn't flip over this time. Well, that is an improvement. The scores at the halfway point. Dude Race Walker in the lead with eight points. Smokin' Joe Ferguson one point behind with seven. Chicken George has five and Gary Gearhead has zero. Gary is starting this race in the pole position, so this is his time to shine. Let's get some points, Gary. Chicken George also starting in the front row on the right. Here we go with race three. It's a close group going down the hill. Gary Gearhead in the lead. Some contact. Down goes Smokin' Joe Ferguson. We got a wipeout. Gary up on two wheels as Dude Race Walker passes both cars and takes the lead. A nice move. The force is strong with this one. This race now belongs to Dude Race Walker. No one is even close to him. And Dude Race Walker will take the win on race three. A well-deserved win there for the dude. I was waiting for the other two cars to arrive, but they are stopped over there by the garage. Oh man, Gary Gearhead so close to actually finishing a race. That's going to be three DNFs in a row. And there goes Smokin' Joe Ferguson. Let's see what happened to him again. It appears that they tried to go three wide on a two wide lane. It was simply physics that put Joe Ferguson on his side. Look at the sneaky pass right here by Dude Race Walker. Goes from third place to first place in one single swoop. That is the type of driving that wins races and gets you to the next level. That right there is how you race walk. Isn't race walking just where you walk like really fast? 
Now that you mentioned it, that probably is what race walking is. My mom used to race walk. Okay, well now his name is ruined for me. I had this whole Luke Skywalker Star Wars vibe going on, and now I'm just picturing some old dude walking really fast. Well, either way, dude race walker is in the lead with 13 points. Smoking Joe Ferguson has seven. Chicken George has five. Gary the Gearhead has not seen the finish line, and the finish line has not seen him. So basically, Dude Racewalker has dominated this race. He's out there playing some Jedi mind tricks. Chicken George in the lead. Dude Racewalker with the overtake. He's told him this is not the race you're looking for. Joe Ferguson caught up with Chicken George. Dude Racewalker is gone, driving solo, running practice laps all the way to the finish line. This was not a race. This was just Dude Racewalker putting on an exhibition show. 18.3. 18 points for Dude Racewalker. He won three out of the four races. Also, a special shout out to Gary Gearhead for consistency with four DNFs in a row. That's a reverse clean sweep, isn't it? It's got to be something. I don't know. Maybe a dirty sweep. And there you have it. Dude Racewalker will be advancing on round two with a time of 15.9608 seconds. Welcome back to King of Mountain Season 4. Tournament number two, round one, group 10. We've got a mix of American Muscle and JDM tonight. I see a Camaro out there. That's right, we got two Chevys, a Camaro and a Corvette, along with a Nissan Skyline and a Mazda RX-7. Let's get to the drivers. First up driving in the Nissan Skyline R30 is the Crazy Canuck, coming to us all the way from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Then we have Just Carl. Yep. Just Carl? That's what it says. First name Just? It's Just Carl. Moving on, we have Big Hogs from Florida driving in the Mazda Savannah RX-7 FC3S. I've heard of Justine, but not Just. It's Just Carl. And last up, we have Bobby Pooker Wright driving in the yellow Chevy Camaro Z28. If it's Just Carl, they could just went with Carl, you know? It's Just Carl. It's not complicated. Just Carl. See, it's that easy. Here we go with race one, the Crazy Canuck starting in the pole position. Top driver in points will advance on to round two. Crazy Canuck leading the pack down into the first big turn. Some paint swapping between Big Hogs and just Carl. Carl currently in second place trying to catch up to that skyline. The Crazy Canuck was up on two wheels for a second there. Here they come to the garage. Final turn. Just Carl passes on the inside and steals the win from the Crazy Canuck. What a finish there for race one. Wow, Carl just got it done with a great pass coming out of the final turn. That was beautifully executed, and that is going to put five points on the board for just Carl. Oh, uh, what happened to Pooker? Bobby Wright stopping over there for some tofu. Hey, you can't blame him. They are running a special tonight, so you want to get there before the line starts. Hey, you know, it's all about priorities. What's more important, getting the tofu or winning a race? If it was me, I'd probably go with the tofu. Let's see this pass again by just Carl. You can see here the Crazy Canuck understeer is coming out of the corner. That opened the door for just Carl, who walked right on through. You know, I'm starting to like this guy, even if he's just Carl. Hey, there's nothing wrong with just being Carl. I didn't say there was anything wrong with it. Maybe Carl Justice would have been a better name, like a superhero, but, you it's know. It's just Carl. I know. I got it. Here we go. Race two, just Carl in the Corvette, starting in the pole position. Bobby Puka right in the yellow Camaro, starting on the front right. Puka really needs to make up for that DNF. Yes, he does. Here comes just Carl, first through the corner. Bobby Wright gets spun around. And he is out of the race. Well, there goes Pooger. We got a race here between Just Carl and the Crazy Canuck. Crazy Canuck trying to get around that Corvette. I don't know. Just Carl's pretty good. Both cars through the parking garage. It's a race to the finish, and Just Carl will take a second win in a row. Wow, Just Carl is just looking good out there on the track. That is going to push his score up to 10 points. He is four points ahead of the Crazy Canuck, who is in second place. There goes Big Hogs, who stuck over on the track. That's going to be a DNF for him and Bobby Wright. Let's see where things went wrong for Bobby Wright and Big Hogs. You can see Wright spin his car around. Big Hogs gets tangled up with him. That forced Bobby Wright off the track and may have damaged the car of Big Hogs as well. Well, I hate to say it, but I think those two are already out of this race. Big Hogs only has two points and Pooker has none. It does now seem to be a two car race between Just Carl and the Crazy Canuck. Two wins in a row for Just Carl. Let's see what he can do on race three. And here they go. Bobby Pooker right starting in the pole position. Just Carl right on his tail. You can tell Just Carl wants to win this race. He's like a shark out there on the track. It's a close group of cars out of the turn. Bobby Wright goes off the road and look at Big Hogs. He went from third to first after all that confusion on that turn. And now he is one turn away from taking the checkered flag on this one. Oh, oh. down goes Big Hogs. Wait. What? He's back up. How? And Big Hogs takes the win. What kind of madness is going on tonight? Big Hogs had an amazing pass. He crashed on the bridge and he still managed to make it past the finish line. That is a big win for Big Hogs. No one else made it past the finish line, and that is going to move Big Hogs up to second place on the scoreboard. 
only three points behind just Carl. Look at the way he threaded that needle. He had a Corvette on his left side, a Camaro on his right, and he went right through the middle. That was probably one of the best passes of the season. I totally agree. But then right here, he almost blows it, steers too hard to the left, goes up on the side, rolls his car all the way over before taking a bump from just Carl, which sends him past the finish line. We gotta see that one more time. Here it is from the bridge cam. Wait, did he hit someone? I think that guy was just really excited. Just as I am to see this last race, Just Carl in the lead with 10 points, Big Hogs has seven, the Crazy Canuck has six, and Bobby Pooker Wright has zero. Pooker trying to get that dirty sweep. We had one last week, we may get another one tonight. This is it, the fourth and final race. Big Hogs starting in the pole position. Who will move on to round two? Let's go. A close race so far, Big Hogs out in the lead. Bobby Wright in second place, followed by the Crazy Canuck. Just Carl gets sideways, and he is out. And he hit some guys arc seven. Big Hogs in the lead, followed by Bobby Pooker Wright. Oh, come on, don't finish Pooker. Go for the dirty sweep. Here they go through the final turn. Big Hogs swerving back and forth, but he holds on to it, makes it past the finish line to take the win. Let's wait for the scoreboard, and Big Hogs makes a comeback in this race and we'll be advancing on to round two. Wow. Big Hogs was certainly the comeback kid tonight. Just Carl, well... He's just Carl. You summed up the entire race right there. This was certainly just Carl's race to lose. And lose it, he did. Yes, he did. And he's going to have a claim on his insurance as well. Yeah, it's not a great night for just Carl. I also got to say I'm disappointed in Pooker. He almost had that dirty sweep. And there you have it, Big Hogs. Moving on to round two at the time of 16.6118 seconds. It's a slower time, but based on his driving tonight, I'm really interested in seeing what he does in round two. That's the second RX-7 so far and move on to the next round. Welcome back to King of the Mountain Season 4. It's time for Tournament 2 Round 1, Group Number 11. Is that safe what they're doing up there? Oh yeah, that's just a rooftop party. A rooftop party? Yeah, it's the latest thing in Race City. In fact, we might have one ourselves. Well, you can count me out because I'm not having a party on a roof. Let's get to tonight's drivers. Up first, we have Julian Button driving in the Dodge Rampage. A Rampage, wow. I think it's the first one this season. Then we have Mike, just Mike, driving in the Mazda RX-7. He's driving for Mike's Garage Products Motorsport. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Then we have Triple B. Wait a minute, does MJF know about this? Who's MJF? He's better than you, and you know it. I don't even know who he is. A generational talent. Okay. And last up, we have Dig Dug driving in the Audi Sport Quattro. Ah, uh, good old classic Dig Dug. I actually had that game on the NES. There's nothing like digging and then popping monsters. Good times. Here we go with race one. Julian Button starting on the inside lane. Mike on his right in the white Mazda. Let's see how this Dodge Rampage handles the track. I'm curious if that motorcycle in the back is going to help or hurt the performance. But so far, Julian Button is looking good out in front. He's way ahead of all the other drivers right now. Here comes Button to the parking garage. No competition right now. Whoa, Triple B comes off the road, hits the pole. Oh. oh my goodness. Fatality. A violent crash there from Julian Button. He does manage to end up on all four tires. Oh no, he hit a dog. Along with several spectators as well. This is tragic. Julian Button, the only driver to make it past the finish line. Dig Dug gets stuck behind Mike's Mazda. And Triple B gets stuck in the garage after running into that column. Let's try to dissect what happened here at the end. I swear that curb has a magnet in it. Those drivers just go straight for it. Maybe we should put up a flag or a cone there or something. Or we could give the spectators a safety fence. Yeah, a cone or a flag sounds great. Julian Button, the only driver with points on the board after that triple DNF. A triple D with triple B. These other drivers are gonna have some makeup to do. There's still three races left. Mike starting in the pole position with Dig Dug on his outside to the right. Mike in the lead, followed by Julian Button. Dig Dug back in third. Some contact between Dig Dug and Triple B. Julian oh. Button goes for the pass but gets blocked. What a defensive move by Mike. He shut Julian Button down. A great strategy there. Mike all alone through the garage. Julian Button way behind. And this race easily goes to Mike with a time of 16.7396 seconds. A clean finish this time from Julian Button. We don't need him to go on another rampage. Dig Dug blocking traffic for Triple B. That is two DNFs in a row for both drivers. Not looking good for those two. Look at this block maneuver right there by Mike. Almost forces Julian Button off the road. You can see back there, Julian Button was up on two wheels for a moment. That move had a big payoff, giving Mike the win. Mike is now three points behind Julian Button. Here we go, the drivers are lined up for race three. Dig Dug and Triple B, who both have zero points, starting in the front row here. Dig Dug will have the pole. They desperately need some points. He needs an Audi Quattro miracle. Here they go down the road for race three. All four drivers in a close group. 
Triple B with a slight leap, but gets past it by Dig Dug. Oh! <laughs> Oh, wow. 2D. Well, those two are out. We shouldn't be laughing when we see a driver crash like I'm that. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. Mike going very slow, spins out. Here comes the rampage. Julian Button passes going through the Fujiwara turn. I'm not sure what Mike was trying to do back there, but it did not work. He was trying to pull a crazy Jimmy, but he was going way too slow. Well, Mike hands that race over to Julian Button, who takes his second win of the night. And that will also be the second triple DNF of the night as well, I guess. Courtesy of Triple B. I don't think Triple B actually caused it. Well, he was in the wreck in the beginning. There's Mike stopped over by the Fujiwara Tofu Shop. We got Dig Dug upside down along with Triple B. Let's go to the replay to see what happened in this. Rampage. This was a rampage. Dig Dug blocking the lane. Then Triple B collides with his car and they just kind of blow up. That was a true chaotic masterpiece. Now this had Mike in the lead. Look right here though. He spins his car around to try to see what's going on behind him, I guess. And that gave him a front seat view of Julian Button's rampage driving right past him. If Mike had attended the Crazy Jimmy School of Driving, he would know you need a lot more speed to pull off that maneuver. I guess he should sign up for those online night classes. Absolutely. Well, here you go. You can stick a fork in this race because it is done. Julian Button has an eight-point lead. Yes, but we may be on the verge of a new record here. Triple B and Dig Dug could possibly both get a dirty sweep. I think we've only had one dirty sweep so far this season. It takes a lot of consistency to not finish a single race. Well, it appears Triple B is actually trying to win this one. Slow down, Triple B. Don't ruin this for us. Julian Button trying to find a way around him. So all of a sudden, Triple B wants to drive fast. Well, he may not want to go down in King of the Mountain history as getting a dirty sweep, as you call it. It's a sweep. It's something to be proud of. A close race to the end as Triple B passes the finish line for the first time tonight. Wait a minute. I don't see Dig Dug over here. No, Dig Duck is not coming. That means we got a dirty sweep. Dirty sweep. Dirty sweep. You prepared that whole thing for a dirty sweep? A dirty sweep is something to celebrate, 3D. Okay, well, Julian Button in his Dodge Rampage will be advancing on to round two, and he's currently the second fastest driver to move on with a track time of 15.3573 seconds. Right behind Terrence Jr. Welcome back to King of the Mountain Season 4. Tournament number two, round one, group number 12. Let's see who's racing tonight. Up first, we have El Jefe of the 407 Diecast Kings driving in the Toyota MR2. The boss is here. Up next, all the way from Germany, is Tim Bookwood in the Ford Sierra Cosworth. That was a popular car choice in tournament number one. Then I believe this is a first for the channel. It's a Mercedes-Benz W123 wagon. All the way from Scotland, too. That's driven by James Kirk. And last up, we have AC from Sacramento in the red Chevrolet Corvette. I think that might be a fast one based on the color. Well, the Toyota is also red. That's probably a fast car, too. Well, here we go with race one of four. The top driver in points advances on to round two. Who's going to win it here tonight? And they're off for the first race. El Jefe with the early lead. Tim Bookwood in the blue Sierra Cosworth in second. James Kirk overtakes AC to move into third. I told you, look at that red car moving down the track. Red means fast. I thought red means recording. What? It's, uh, never mind. El Jefe makes it out of the garage, over the bridge, and that win will go to... Whoa! Oh, wow! Oh, boy. Oh! That was a... Fatality. That had to hurt. Is every driver in this tournament a demolition derby driver? I would not be surprised. Well, we got one car flipped over with spectators on the ground. Let's try to dissect what went wrong here. There's Tim Bookwood in a blue Ford. Boom! Ouch! Good night. A double team on the spectators by Tim Bookwood and James Kirk. That dude is down for the count, man. Multiple people are down for the count. Let me hit one more fatality here. Fatality. Race in peace to the guy in the green shirt and the guy with the blue hoodie. The medics will be here soon and they should be just fine. At least they went out doing what they loved, watching King of the Mountain up close and personal. Bam! Yeah, after seeing it again from this angle, go ahead and hit that button one more time. I got you. Fatality. Race in peace, blue hoodie guy. Here we go with race two, this time Tim Bookwood in the blue Cosworth will be starting in the pole position, AC to his right in the red Corvette. Let's see how fast that red Corvette is. And here they go for the second race. Tim Bookwood leading out the first turn, El Jefe behind him in second, AC in third. All the drivers are spaced out here, El Jefe gaining on Tim Bookwood, goes for the pass! Get it, boss! Oh no, down goes the guardrail and El Jefe! That was some shoddy workmanship on that guardrail. It did get hit by a car. Tim Bookwood takes the win on race two with a time of 15.4342 seconds. And he is the only one to pass the finish line. Everyone else will get a DNF. We got our first triple D of the night. El Jefe rolled onto the grass. James Kirk upside down. And AC is stuck sideways in the parking garage. Let's go to the replay right here. You'll see El Jefe 
goes for the inside lane pass. Tim Bookwood pushes him into the guardrail. He flips off the road. At least that was a soft landing. Certainly softer than usual, but I'm not quite sure what happened to James Kirk. I'll tell you what's going to happen. The captain is going to get court-martialed for taking out that dude in the blue hoodie in the first race. I highly doubt it. We've had a lot of spectators hit this season, and the local authorities just don't really seem to care. So these guys have a license to kill. I don't even know if they have a driver's license. What kind of operation are we running here? It's King of the Mountain, street racing. Okay, see, now I feel like I'm part of some criminal organization here. It's more of a gray area organization. Here we go with race three, AC in the lead, followed closely behind by Tim Bookwood. Whoa. Contact on the corner, some aggressive driving by Tim. James Kirk goes high for the pass. Beam me up, Scotty. It's a battle for position. Oh Down goes James Kirk. AC now running away with it. El Jefe passes Tim Bookwood in the garage, and AC will take the win on race three, giving him some much needed points after that last DNF. Well, that race right there was worth the price of a mission if we actually charged a mission, do we? We don't, but that's not a bad idea. James Kirk and the Mercedes wagon upside down for the second time tonight. Let's see just how this race went down. Look at James Kirk in the white wagon. Tim Bookwood pushing him into the side wall, just like he did El Jefe in the last race. That was some dirty racing, but I liked it. And then look right here, El Jefe in the red Toyota sneaks past Tim Bookwood to take second place. That's gonna put El Jefe closer in points to Tim Bookwood. The score going into the final race. Tim Bookwood has 10, El Jefe has eight, AC has six, and James Kirk has two. It's a race between the Ford and the Toyota. James Kirk has a pole, El Jefe starting in the front right. Here we go for race four. It's a close group of cars coming down the hill. James Kirk with a slight lead. Oh, oh. down goes James Kirk again. Wipeout. AC pulls into the lead. Tim Bookwood blocking El Jefe. They should call him Tim Blockwood. AC now all alone on the track. There is no one behind him. And that is an easy win for AC. I don't see anyone else coming down here to the finish line. What's that mean? We're waiting for the official score. AC what? does it! AC makes a comeback wow. and is moving on to round two. I don't know how he pulled that off. He started that race in the back row and he was four points behind. That was Tim Bookwood's race to lose. I think he did a little too much blocking on the track tonight and that cost him the race. There was James Kirk. He lived long, but he did not prosper. Let's see the replay. James Kirk getting rolled over into the turn, gets pushed down the track by AC. Then he gets shoved out of the way. Look at this inside pass by Tim Bookwood. He goes to block El Jefe, but gets locked up with his car. And that right there cost him tonight's race. Blocking can definitely be a gamble in racing. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Tonight, it did not work out in Tim Bookwood's favor. And there you have it. AC will be moving on to round two in his Corvette with a track time of 16.6548 seconds. Welcome back to King of the Mountain. Is it me or is there a little extra security here tonight? I did see quite a few officers here on the way. Oh no, they're coming for us. Relax, we got waivers. First up tonight is Lucas, AKA Big Cat, driving in the BMW M1. Stay rad, Big Cat. Then driving in the Ford RS200 is Turbo Mo, driving for Gnarly Marley Racing. Then up next we have Bo Jiden, driving in a Mazda RX-7. Is that? No, it can't be. It sounds awfully familiar. He would be way too old to race. That name is pretty sus if you ask me. Speaking of old, we have Old Sarge driving in the Toyota MR2. That may explain these guys in the black suits. It's not what you're thinking. It's Bo, like Bo knows. That was Bo Jackson. Jackson, Jiden, Tomato, Tomato. What if he crashes? We have crashes all the time. Yeah, but this is big. He's just another driver. Here we go with race one. Lucas out in the lead, starting in the pole position. Bo right behind him. Old Sarge gets spun around going into the turn. Let's see if he can make it all the way down the hill going backwards. Lucas, big cat, way out ahead. Is everyone else asleep? Well, he's racing a bunch of old guys, so... Hey, old guys can drive fast, too. Well, these ones aren't. And Lucas will take an easy win on race one with a track time of 15.5290 seconds. Nice to see everyone out there driving safely. Yes, almost everyone made it down here to the finish line. Old Sarge, however, stopped right after that first big turn. That's going to be a DNF for him. Let's go to the replay here. Old Sarge gets spun around. He attempts to continue the race going backwards, but it is not as easy as it looks. No, it's not. Here we go with race two. Lucas, Big Cat, currently in lead with five points. Bo has three, and Mo has two. And they're off. Turbo Mo starting in the pole position. Lucas drafting right behind Turbo Mo. Lucas trying to find a way around that RS200. That Big Cat is looking to pounce. Turbo Mo with the lead, headed towards the Fujiwara turn. Lucas on two wheels there for a second. It's a close race into the garage. Lucas goes on the inside for the pass. Oh, he's a beast. And Lucas will steal that race from Turbo Mo. That is two wins for Lucas in the BMW M1. 
and it appears we have a triple DNF on our hands. That is a big win for Lucas. He is now seven points ahead of second place. The Wildcat has been unleashed. Let's take another look at that pass. You can see here, Lucas tracking down Turbo Mo. He's right on his tail, waiting for the perfect opportunity to make the pass. Turbo Mo goes right, Lucas falls behind, but then pulls on the inside. Such a beautiful pass right there. Absolutely, you can see him just waiting for the perfect time to make that pass. And he executed that with precision. That brings us to race three. Old Sarge has zero points. He's starting in the pole position. Bo Jiden to his right, currently in second place with three points. Let's be real, 3D. This race is over. There's a big cat on the track, and his name is Lucas. Remember, we have seen some big comebacks in tournament two. We have, but that car is a beast. Old Sarge in the lead, followed by Jiden. Lucas is closing in. There's contact. Lucas makes the pass on the outside. Oh, when they go low, we go high, 3D. That is one bad kitty. Lucas all alone through the garage. Here comes Bo, and that's going to be Lucas's third win in a row. Yes. Hey, don't mess up that Beamer. That really does make this race pretty much over. Just take a fork in it. It is done. But wait a minute. So far, we have not seen a clean sweep in a race this season. We've had a couple dirty sweeps. Yes, but Lucas may be on the verge of actually getting a clean sweep. Four wins in a row. That would be awesome. He will be starting the final race in the front row on the right side. So there is a chance we may see some history being made here tonight. Come on, you got this, Lucas. We got Bo Jiden starting in the pole. Lucas, big cat to the right. Can he do the seemingly impossible here in Race City? Win four races in a row. Let's go, big cat. Here they go for the fourth and final race. It's a close race right here. Bo Jiden in the lead. Old Sarge and Lucas fighting for second. Come on, Lucas, get her done. Bo up on two wheels. Lucas passes. Yes, let's go. Lucas goes on the inside, gets blocked. Come on. Old Sarge loses control. Here comes Lucas. He's going for it. Here they come to the bridge. Old Sarge still in the lead, and Old no. Sarge oh. will take the win on the last race. Come on. That will not be a clean sweep ah. for Lucas, a.k.a. Big Cat. We were so close. Yes, we were, but still an incredible performance there by Lucas, winning three out of four races and coming in second place on the last one. He is definitely a contender to watch out for in the next round. And there goes Bo. Is he sleeping? He's probably just posing for the fans. This was certainly an exciting race and performance by Lucas. He will be moving on to round two with a track time of 15.5290 seconds. Way to stay rad, Lucas. Definitely a rad paint job on that car. Welcome back to King of the Mountain. It's season four, tournament two, round one, group 14. Let's see who's going to be driving tonight. First up is Rippin' Randy of Furiously Collecting, driving in the Chevy Corvette. Let her rip, Randy. Let her rip. Then next up in the BMW M1 is Lone Star of Live Young Diecast. Lone Star representing for the Lone Star State. And driving in another Corvette, we have Puff of Puffs Racing. Puff the Magic Dragon would be proud. And last up all the way from Germany is Ben G in the Porsche 959 driving for Pretzel Racing. Yum. You know, a lightly salted soft pretzel sounds pretty good right now. Here we go. As usual, the drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points advances on to round two. Rip and Randy starting in the pole position. We have America versus Germany here in this race tonight. Rip and Randy currently in lead, followed by Lone Star. Through the first big turn, Puff in third. Benji trailing way behind. Randy bumping into the wall. Lone Star closing in. Watch out, those BMW M1s are fast. He's trying to catch him in the garage. Lone Star swerving, and Rip and Randy will take the win on race one. Followed by Lone Star and then Puff. And I do not see Benji down here at the finish. Look at that. Benji takes the first DNF of the night. Benji stopped over at the parking garage. He does know he's supposed to be racing and not parking, correct? With how slow he was going, he might as well have been parked. That may be true. A competitive race there between Rip and Randy and Lone Star. Rip and Randy takes the first win. Lone Star will now be starting in the pole position. Benji in the front row to his right in the yellow Porsche. Here we go with race two. That's one win so far for Team America. Should I start a USA chance? No, that's not necessary. USA. Lone USA. Star in the lead. Rip and Randy falling close behind in second. Benji and Puff taking their sweet time uh -oh. down the track. He's up on two wheels. Lone Star hanging off the side of the road. He gets a tap on the back from Rip and Randy. It's another close race across the bridge. And this time it's Lone Star to finish in first place, followed by Rip and Randy. Watch out! Whoa, a close pass there at the intersection. I have the fatality button ready. And there's Rip and Randy popped up on the side of the curb. There goes Puff trying to help him out. That win for Lone Star will tie him with Rip and Randy. Both drivers have eight points each. 
So it's currently a tie between Team USA and Germany. Look at this right here. Such a close call. Lone Star just barely missing those two cars. That's two races down, two to go. Puff five points behind. Benji down by six. Both drivers starting in the front row here on race three. They need a win here to have any chance of moving on. I think it may be a lost cause for both drivers. Let's see, there's still time. Benji being pushed down the track by Lone Star. Benji needs all the help he can get. Lone Star going for the pass, gets spun around. He's getting wild. Benji now way ahead of everyone else. This may be the miracle Benji needs. It's now Puff in second place, Lone Star in third. Benji slowing down in the garage. There goes Puff for the Puff Puff pass. Oh, he's going for it, but no! Benji gets another push from Lone Star and takes the win on race three. What a close finish. I thought Puff was going to get the pass, but Lone Star came through with the assist for Benji. And we have a wreck on the track. Rip and Randy upside down on the turn. Wait a minute. Is that UPS guy delivering directly to their car? I guess so. They do roadside delivery? Must be a new pilot program or something. Look at this exchange right here. Puff has the lead, but Lone Star pushes Benji across the finish line for the win. I know Puff can't be too happy about that. Well, no, he's all the way on the bottom of the scoreboard. The score is going into race four. Lone Star with 10. Rip and Randy has eight. Benji has seven. And Puff has six. Puff starting on the pole in the fourth and final race. Here they go. Rip and Randy out to an early lead. Lone Star moving into second. Both drivers spin around going in reverse. Oh yeah, this should be interesting. Two drivers going backwards, two going forwards. Puff moves his way into second place. Go for the pass, Puff. Oh, down goes Lone Star. That had to hurt. Puff now way out in front. And this race will go to Puff. Followed by Rip and Randy. And here comes Benji way, way in the back. So who's the winner? We're waiting for the scores here. Oh, oh we got a tie! Yeah! We've got a tie! That's what I'm talking about. That means we're going to a tiebreaker race. That's incredible. Puff was all the way on the bottom of the scoreboard. Now he's tied for first with Rip and Randy. That means both German cars are out of the race. It comes down to the two Corvettes. Rip and Randy versus Puff. Right here is where things go really wrong for Lone Star. He pops up on that barrier and flips over. Here we go, tiebreaker race. Rip and Randy had the faster time tonight. So he's starting on the inside lane. Only one can advance on to round two. Who's it going to be? Rip and Randy or Puff? Uh, it's Rip and Randy. Look at that. Yeah, where'd Puff go? I think he's frolicking in the autumn mist in a land called Hanalee. You know, little Jackie Paper loved that oh, rascal Puff. Jackie Paper just loved Puff so much. Is Puff still in this race? Oh, there he goes. Puff just cruising around back there. I think Puff has ceased his fearless roar. And Rip and Randy wins the tiebreaker race to advance on to round two. Puff sadly slipped into his cave on that last race. I was hoping for a little more out of that dragon. Well, he was certainly dragging tonight. Am I right? Am I right? Oh, you're making a joke. You know, you could have... Rip and Randy advances on to round two with a track time of 15.8546 seconds. That will be the second Corvette to move on to the second round. Welcome back to King of the Mountain season four Tournament number two, round one, group 15. Let's see who's driving tonight. Up first from Portland, Oregon, we have Michael Jackson driving in the Pontiac Firebird. The king of pop is here. But will he be the king of the mountain? I don't know, but we got Barbie's boyfriend, Ken, driving in the Buick Regal GNX. He's driving for Basement Motorworks. Then we've got Ego from Denver, Colorado, driving in the Nissan Maxima wagon. Some nice details on that wagon. And last up is Otto Von beer mark don't look at me i don't speak french i'm pretty sure it's german and he's driving in the audi sport quattro the top driver in points after four races will advance on to round two michael jackson will be starting us off in the pole position ken to his right in the green buick michael jackson out in front followed by ego ken in third otto von in fourth everyone clean through the first big turn there's some contact as Ego bumps into the rear end of Jackson. Let the paint swapping begin. Jackson far ahead of everyone else. And it looks like race one will go to Michael. Whoa! Whoa. Ouch! That was... Uh, I got it, 3D. Fatality. I was going to say a rough finish. That was a little more than a rough finish. Someone just took a Firebird to the face. Yeah, there's a couple spectators down. And we're still missing two drivers. There they are. Ken popped up on the barrier, blocking Autovon. That's going to be a DNF for both drivers. Here's the replay of that finish. Here it is. Ooh! Yeah, that was... Uh, Fatality. Okay, we get it. Well, he took out two people, so I figure we should do it twice. Here it is from a different angle. It doesn't look as bad from that angle. What screen are you watching? Look at that. I'm pretty sure it's survivable. Really? Let's see it one more time from the Skycam. 
Look at that. Three people down. I think they just got bumped out of the way, and they'll be just fine. The delusion is strong with you tonight. Here we go with race two. Ken in the green Buick starting in the pole. Otto Vaughn on his right. Both drivers had a DNF on the last race, so they need some points, and this is their chance right here. And they're off. Ken out in front, followed by Michael Jackson. Otto Vaughn in third, Ego in fourth. Jackson trying to navigate around that Buick Regal. Ken taps the side, and again, that's gonna slow him down. Here comes MJ. Jackson makes contact, looking for the pass through the garage. Ken makes it out, still in first, and race two will go to Ken, followed by Jackson. Otto Vaughn takes third, and we are still missing Ego. I believe that's gonna be Ego's first DNF of the night. Ego gets stopped over at the entrance of the bridge. Pretty much the same spot that Ken stopped on the first race. It's a very popular spot for tourists to take photos. Well, they could take all the photos they want after the race. You don't want to miss the perfect shot. Well, apparently Ego needs to check his priorities. Here we go, race three. Michael Jackson currently in the lead with eight points. Ken has five, Ego has three, and Otto Vaughn has two. Michael Jackson looking very good out there. I hope he performs after the race. You know, Michael and Jackson are very common, popular names. Well, that's true. I, I just got a note from Susan. Apparently, there's a Michael watching this race right now, and it says you're not subscribed, Michael. Wait, Mike's not subscribed? Hey, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just reading the note. Michael, come on. Subscribe already. It's just one hit of a button. Otto Vaughn leading through the garage, followed by Ken. And Otto Vaughn picks up the win on race three with a track time of 17.8. Here comes Michael Jackson to take third. Ken takes second, and Ego is missing once again. I think he's letting his ego get in the way of him coming down to the finish line. It's the only way to win. Hey, everyone is at different levels in their journey. While well, his journey is taking him to the bottom of the scoreboard, here's another look at that interaction between Otto Vaughn and Ken. Ken trying to push Otto Vaughn out of the way. He bounces side to side, but regains control and keeps Ken in his rear view all the way to the finish line. Here's the scores going into the fourth and final race. Michael Jackson on top with 10, Ken has eight, Otto Vaughn has seven, and Ego is at the bottom with three. Well, it is over for Ego, that's for sure. There's still a chance for Ken and Otto Vaughn to move on, but right now, Michael Jackson is looking like the driver to beat in this race. I don't know if there's anyone else out there who can beat it. He is pretty good. I think he beat bad, whoa! Ken slams into the palm tree. That's gonna be it for Ken. We got Jackson trying to pass up Ego. He's going for it right here. Jackson on the inside. He doesn't get it. And race four will go to Ego, followed by Michael Jackson. And here comes Audubon to take third. But the winner of tonight's race will be Michael Jackson with a score of 13 points. Oh man, that last race was a thriller. I thought Jackson was gonna make that pass like a smooth criminal, but apparently Billie Jean was not his lover. Well, I what are you talking about? She was just a girl that claimed that he was the one, but the kid is not his son. You're making zero sense here. Michael Jackson will be moving on to round two of Tournament 2 of King of the Mountain Season 4 with a track time of 16.2431 seconds. Welcome back. It's time for the final race for round one of King of the Mountain Season 4 Tournament number two. Oh boy, I see a Mustang out there. Let's see who's driving tonight. We've got Sam Hall in the Cadillac Seville driving for Team DRT3K. Sam comes to us from Oregon, then all the way from Australia, it's Crazy Koala in the Nissan Skyline R30. Well, you know me, I like crazy. Then you're gonna love White Goodman's no. Mustang SVO. I'm going to preemptively hit the fatality button right now. 2D, put the button away. I will hit it if I need to. And last up, we have Isabel Howdy. Howdy, Isabel. Coming all the way from Scotland in the Ford Sierra Cosworth. There's one spot left for round two. Which of these four drivers is gonna take it? Top driver in points moves on. Who's it gonna be? I've gotta cheer for Crazy Koala. Here they go down the road for race one. A close group to start things off. Sam Hall leading them down the track. White Goodman right behind in that Mustang SVO. Crazy Koala in third, Isabel Howdy in fourth. Sam Hall doing a lot of bouncing into the walls. That's gonna slow him down, but right now he's doing good. Here comes White Goodman. Here we go, this is how it starts, sweetie. White Goodman pushing Sam Hall down. Oh, God. Whoa! Well, go ahead. Fatality. I really hate to be the guy that said, I told you so, but I think this picture speaks for itself. That was hard to watch. Let's see it again. This right here is classic Mustang behavior. Once it sees a crowd, it goes straight for it. It kind of looked like the crazy koala rammed into the back end of the Mustang. I don't blame our Aussie friends for this mess. Everyone knows koalas are sweet, cute, and cuddly. A Mustang, on the other hand, is a dangerous beast. Well, either way, thoughts and waivers to the fans that got hit right there. 
and we're still not really sure who won that race. The Mustang should be disqualified. Here it is from the finish cam, and the race goes to Sam Hall in the Cadillac Seville. White Goodman will take second, Crazy Qual takes third, and Isabel Howdy finishes in fourth. Here we go with race two. This time we have Crazy Koala in the pole position. Isabel Howdy to the right in the blue and white. Ford Sierra Cosworth. Bring on the mayhem. Hopefully all the mayhem is behind us now. I highly doubt it. Crazy Koala in the lead. Sam Hall currently in second place. Koala looking fast as he goes through the first big turn. Right now he is flying solo down the track. Sam Hall in distant second. Through the parking garage. Whoa. Here comes Mayhem. Crazy Koala almost went off the road. Finishes. Here we Whoa. go. Watch out, people. Ooh, a hard hit at the end from White Goodman. But it appears everyone will make it out of that wreck just fine. That hit from White Goodman was completely unnecessary. True, but at least he didn't hit anybody in the crowd. Very surprising. That's going to be a DNF for Isabel Howdy. She only has one point so far, not looking very good. Let's see what happened here to Crazy Koala. Comes out of the garage, goes up on the side, luckily did not drive off the bridge. Spins around, gets a push from Sam Hall to make it past the finish line, right before Sam Hall plows into his side. And here comes White Goodman to add insult to injury. You know, he might not be able to see where he's going with that decal on his windshield. Don't blame the decal, 3D. Blame the driver and the car. Well, the driver certainly is fully responsible for all actions taken in the car. The car is also to blame. Well, here we are with race three. Isabel Howdy in the pole position only has one point so far, so this is her chance to try to get some points on the board. A win here can add five points, bringing her up to six. It's a close group as all four drivers race single file down the track. Crazy Koala knocking on the door of Isabel Howdy. Oh, oh my oh. goodness! He was knocking, but Isabel Howdy just slammed the door in his face. That was wild! Only two drivers make it past the finish line. Isabel Howdy followed by Sam Hall. I am not quite sure what happened to Crazy Koala. And look at White Goodman upside down. Ah, yes, the Mustang's default position. They have a saying, keep your wheels to the sky. That's a terrible saying. But it's true. Let's see what happened here. You can see Koala making a lane change. Howdy swerving around, forces oh. Koala into the light post. Did you see that Mustang flip off the track? That was crazy. It appears Crazy Koala's car bounced into the light post, then hit White Goodman's Mustang off the road. Just a crazy chain reaction of events there. And now Isabel Howdy has six points, one point over White Goodman. Sam Hall on top of the scoreboard with a 11. Crazy Koala has seven. White Goodman starting the fourth and final race in the pole position. Sam Hall to his right in the white Cadillac Seville. Can anyone beat Sam Hall's caddy? Well, White Goodman certainly cannot win. He only has five points. So he is technically, mathematically, and scientifically out of this race. I think it's really going to come down to Crazy Koala and Sam Hall. Sam Hall back there in second place. No signs of Crazy Koala or Isabel Howdy. White Goodman finishes in first. Sam Hall takes second. That means your winner of the night is Sam Hall in the Cadillac Seville. Where'd the other two go? Isabel Howdy is stopped over in the parking garage and Crazy Koala is upside down next to a cliff. Well, it is a koala, so it makes sense. I'm not quite sure how that makes sense. It's a koala. Okay. And it's crazy. I guess crazy can explain it. See? Let's look at the final results. Here we go, Sam Hall, the last driver to make it through to round two. And there are your 16 drivers who will be competing in the second round of tournament number two. I am looking forward to Terrence Jr. dominating in that second round. We've gone from 64 drivers down to the top 16. Round two is shaping up to be some good racing. We hope you enjoyed tonight's race. Until next time, I'm 3D Botmaker. And I'm 2D. And you've been watching King, King of, of the, the Mountain. Mountain.